Okay, we have Braden Mann. Any questions for Braden? They're going to make me start it off. Why don't you talk about the team and the preparations you've had this spring? Uh, it's been awesome. The spring and uh, summer are going really well. And the new guys who just came in, um, putting in a lot of work. And I just think that this offseason was really productive in the weight room and on the field and just doing a lot of extra stuff. Gauging from past questions from your teammates and coach you've been in here, can you talk about the LSU game? It was the craziest experience of my life. Uh, I've never even watched a seven overtime game, much less played in one. Uh, and by like the third overtime, I basically did watch because I didn't have to hold anymore. So I basically had a field sideline pass, and it was an incredible game to um, just be a part of. Okay, to your right. Braden John Wilson with KBTX. You guys beat LSU, had a bowl win, so much was accomplished last year. What do you hope to build on and, and accomplish in this season? Uh, I just think taking the energy that we finished with and, and going into the first half of the season. Uh, this first half, we started off a little slower than we did the end of the season, which has been kind of different for us. Uh, normally, or in the past, we've kind of fallen off just a little bit in November, and I think that was a huge emphasis for us this year that we improved on a lot. So now it's just about starting, um, starting fast and finishing fast. You've gone through a series of interviews already today. What have been the questions you've, you've had? Uh, we've never seen a punter at SEC Media Day. That was number one, <laughs> which I laugh at every time because I was like, well, A&M had another one a couple years ago, so there's two for you. <laughs> okay, right here in the middle. Go ahead. Hey, uh, I was just wondering, um, at what age did you realize you could – maybe take your talent to the next level. I'm, I'm, I'm just curious at like what age you could think you could maybe play Division One, much less you know, win the Ray Guy Award. So could you kind of talk about at what point in your life you realized, hey, maybe I could really make something out of this? Uh, well, my whole life I thought I was going to play linebacker in college. So I realized I couldn't do that my freshman year. So I realized I might be able to do it at punter my sophomore year. I started taking it a lot more seriously. I'd always kind of done it for my team just because. But my sophomore year, I realized that this is something I, I can really improve on and do. So I started kicking and punting a lot. And that's when I kind of um, just really started to focus on it and really take it actually seriously. Right here in the middle, please. Nine quarterbacks are here this week. You've got all kinds of linebackers, uh, wide receivers, running backs. One punter. You obviously know that. You've been asked a million times about that, but that means you get to rep the special teamers from across the entire SEC. Uh, you know, give us your, your elevator speech on why more teams should be bringing special teamers to media days. Uh, it's a third of the game. I, I mean, we got to bring three guys, and we brought an offense, a defense, and a special teams guy. And so uh, I think that's something Coach Fisher has really stressed since he's been here, you know, the very first month he got here, he talked about how every phase matters just as much as the other. And a lot of coaches seem to think that special teams just a play in between offense and defense, but it's really a third of the game that can change it. And so I think that's something that I can bring here and just kind of show people. To your left here on the second row. One of the toughest losses that you guys had this past season was uh, in Jordan Hale against Auburn. Um, what do you think, you know, with this year, Auburn coming to the 12th man, what do you think, um, do you feel like you have a chip on your shoulder to kind of re have revenge for that game, or is it just another game for you? I mean, is it any different just because of how close it was last year and how it was a, a tough loss for you guys? Uh, yeah, that game definitely um, put a bad taste in our mouth. But right after the game, you know, we realized that we just, if we got caught up on it, we wouldn't be able to finish the season like we wanted to. So this year, I don't think we're looking at it as really a revenge game. It's just going to be, you know, on our schedule. We're going to come out and play every team just like the other teams, you know. Um, we're going to have the same preparation, and I just think we're going to go into it with definitely some juice this year. Gentlemen here. Hey, man, Caleb, no, CBS Knoxville. Uh, what is your favorite or which one are you best at of talking like practice kicking games, like punt golf? Uh, <laughs> pass, punt, and kick. I mean, there's a ton of them. Which one are you best? Which one do you like? Also, how good of a long snapper are you? <laughs> um, the one, uh, my favorite game is punt golf. So the rule is you get to go from one end of the field to the other. You, got, you get a punt, a uh, throw, and then a drop kick. So if you just do a punt and a throw, it's, um, it's one under. And so that's the one I like a lot just because I, like I, I feel like I can let the arm loose a little bit. Uh, and then, um, oh, oh, deep snapping, that's right. Uh, so my sophomore year, I actually was a backup deep snapper for a game because we only traveled one. And so our deep snapper we thought got hurt. Uh, so I almost went in on third down. Then we found out he was, he was healthy. So I practice deep snapping just because we have that much free time in practice. <laughs> to your right. 
Braden, as players, how do you guys approach the upcoming schedule that is arguably one of the toughest in the country? Uh, I don't think we look at it as really a different schedule. Um, we're never going to have an easy schedule. We play in the SEC West, so it's not – it's not really anything outlandish for us. I just think it gives us a great opportunity to kind of prove what kind of a team we are, what kind of a team we've built um, over the past year and a half. Hey, to your right. Hey, Braden. Leah Musgrave, TechSags.com. First of all, optimism is certainly high around the A&M fan base for year two under Jimbo Fisher, but I'd like to know what was your initial adjustment like to this new staff, and then what are you expecting from your staff in 2019? Uh, I say the the staff is just different. Um, we had a lot of differences, and so we just kind of had to get used to it. Um, we all love the staff. The coaches are all amazing. Uh, Coach Fisher obviously has been awesome to play under, and I'm looking forward to another season with it. Uh, he just kind of brought a lot of different stuff. He's an old school guy who just likes to do things the right way all the time, and, I, and that's what I love about him. Um, and then I just think that, to answer the second question, I just think that uh, the staff going into this year is really looking forward to it because now we've got a year under our belt um, with, all, with everyone that's new. Uh, we've kind of had time to adjust, and we've gone through a season, so we know what we can work on, what we did well, and so I think we can improve on both. To your left over here on the third row. Hey, AJ Spur, 90.7 WVUA Tuscaloosa. Who's the last player you want back uh, returning your punt? Uh, I don't know. There's, a, there's so many in the uh, SEC, it's ridiculous. I know this year um, – just situation-wise, we had uh, we played Alabama. I don't know which. It was pretty early in the season, and um, Jerry Judy was obviously one of our guys, but uh, that we didn't want to touch the ball. But basically, everyone you get in the SC West has um, great returning experience. I know South Carolina had a really good returner, really big returner who um, could obviously go fast down the field. Uh, so I just try to keep it out of everyone's hands. <laughs> That's the goal. Okay, against the wall. Go ahead. Hey, Braden. Michael Braden from Saturday Down South. I know you have uh, no input on the schedule or anything like that, but I just want to get your thoughts on Texas A&M playing Texas. Would you, if they gave you the option to bring that game back, would you want to see it brought back? Uh, that's way above my pay grade. <laughs> um, I know I grew up watching the rivalry, and I love watching it, obviously. Um, it was something we did every, every November, you know, and I didn't even grow up an A&M or Texas fan, really. Um, but that was just one of the games I love watching. So um, I don't really get a choice in that. Um, you know, whatever, whatever teams on our schedule, that's what we're going to play. So if they're, if they're our team, I know we're going to play them as hard as we can. I know we'll, have a, we'll, we'll definitely give them run for their money. Okay, to your left. So Sam Cook for the Ravens said he had 28 different styles or different types of punts. How many do you have in your arsenal? Uh, I actually watched that entire video and I got really inspired a couple years ago. Uh, I went and uh, my special teams coach at the time, uh, Coach Banks, he had me sit down and watch every single one of Sam Cooke's punts over the past three years. So I got to witness a lot of those 28 or 26 or whatever. Um, I would say in mine, I, I have probably seven or eight different ones that I do. Uh, what's so crazy about him is that he can really – do it from the exact same position. So he doesn't give it away at all. So that's what I'm trying to work on for sure. He is definitely fun to watch. Again, to your left. Would you rather have 45-yard fair catches all the time or 60 yards with 15-yard returns? You're both in that 45. Which, you, which would you rather have? <laughs> uh, just as a stress reliever, 45 net and gross. Um, you know, when you, whenever I hit it, and it goes further than my coverage can cover the time. Any return yards is, is bad for us. So um, I just think that fair catches are definitely a lot um, safer of an option. I know it seems boring. It seems like less of a fun play to have rather than a 60-yard punt. Um, but I would definitely say a fair catch just to ease off of my stress level a little bit. Do people underestimate the SEC fever in the state of Texas? A little. <laughs> just because... Uh, I don't know. I think everyone's kind of caught up on Big 12 versus SEC, but they're, I mean, they're just different. They're really not going to, no one's ever going to settle it, I think. And so uh, people can stress out about all they, all they want to, but um, it's never going to be settled. Uh, I just know that the SEC is, is, is it just means more to us. <laughs> okay. Question here in the middle. Jimbo Fisher is one of the uh, fastest talkers I've ever covered. Do you yeah. guys ever have trouble? understanding him and is there somebody on the team that can do a like a, a, a perfect Jimbo Fisher impression uh guy on the team 
Kellen can do a pretty good one. Kellen Mon, uh, you may want to ask him. But um, I think everyone on the team does an impression. I don't know if they're all good. Um, but if you think he talks fast in interviews, you should see him in practice. It's twice the speed. <laughs> um, now, now we've gotten used to it. So um, I can definitely understand him now just because it got a little bit of taking used to the first spring. But um, now it, you kind of says the same stuff in practice. Now I kind of got it by, uh, by memory. <laughs> Oh. Well, the one he always says to me during punt period is, uh, don't get bored. So he's always like, all right, let me, let me see. <laughs> uh, he's always like, now we can't get bored now. You know, when a golfer changes the swing, he always messes up. All right, don't get bored, don't change anything. Okay, to your left, please. Um, oh, let me get my train of thought back, sorry. Um, I was just wondering who, who in the NFL or maybe – they didn't make it to the NFL. Did you model your game after, or who do you currently model a game after? And also, who's the GOAT punter? Uh, the GOAT is either Ray Guy or Shane Leckler. And that, I know it seems biased because I go to AM, he went to AM, but I mean, if you look at the numbers, he played so long in the league and he was just, he was just the best, in my opinion. Um, and then who I modeled my game after, uh, once I got to learn a little bit of him, is Sam Cook, actually. Um, and then Pat McAfee, not just because of his off-the-field stuff, but he was kind of a shorter punter uh, in the league. You know, you see guys who are 6'5", 6 6'6", 6 6, who just have those long levers, and I've got kind of shorter legs, and I'm more like him, and so that's who I kind of wanted to be like in high school. Do we have anything else? Thanks very much. Very Thank entertaining you. face.